hello, hello, my beautiful darlings of the Creative Genius Life Coaching Group. Greetings, Zin Chao from Vietnam, from Da Nang, Vietnam. I've turned the aircon off because it was very loud, so I might get a little glowy, as they say. I was going to record this later on today, well, come on here live later on today, but it's so present to just come on right now and to share some things with you that have come about from the last week's voice visibility and vulnerability challenge that um, was an eight day challenge and it was rich and expansive and juicy and thought provoking and as many very alive things are continued and continued and continued to gift a lot of different threads for me i'm really kind of feeling full of the wonders from that hi hazel hello beauty oh mwah, darling sweetheart so yeah please do say hello if you are watching this now watching this live and if you're watching this on the replay you can let me know say hashtag replay or just say hello as well i have missed you i have been awol from this space for a while lots of changes i think a lot of people are feeling that sense of changes a lot of crazy astrological stuff going on right now but i want to get straight into what it is i want to share with you so i'm very clear that i feel that so much of what I am offering to you, working with you, sharing with you in my own creative life is around these three V's that we've been exploring last week, voice, visibility, vulnerability. Just breaking that down, just very short, shortly. Our voice is the what. It's what we are here to express. It's who we are. It might be just simply how we live our life. It might be the words that we are using, our literal voice. It could be how we express ourselves in the world. It could be our art, our craft. Um, it could be the work that we do. It could be how we are raising a family, how we are in our love relationships, how we are in service to the world. This is what our voice is and within that is this deeper root of our why it's connected to our ultimate vision something bigger than just little old navel gazing us so just very briefly voice the visibility aspect is how we do that in the world okay how do we express that how do we live as how do we create this community this family this love relationship this business this exhibition so on and so on and so on and for me that has a strategy that is unique to each and every single one of us just like our fingerprints are there isn't a one size fits all but it is the active aspect of the three v's and then finally and this is what i'd like for us to explore or what i want to share with you today is the vulnerability because in order to really claim and express and go, this is who I am. This is the voice of what it is I am offering into life by simply being who I am. Basically my genius of who I am. And to share that, to show up, to share that in whatever way feels appropriate and right for us. Yeah, our strategy of visibility equals the risk of vulnerability. This is what I want to share with you today. This piece, a little bit of a um, conversation around vulnerability. So it's interesting because I feel like right now in this moment, here I am, here is my voice, here I am sharing something that feels so meaningful to me. My strategy of visibility is live video. I love engaging i love you being able to see me to to feel me it's the way that i can really really express this fire and this urgency that's coming through and the vulnerability is to to first of all to show up in this way it is risky this is what we're going to look at now it really is 
Um, and it's risky for lots of reasons. And this is what I want to touch on. is something that's come up for me, which even as I think about it now, I can feel at my heart. I don't know. I, I was just... The last few days is interesting. I always like to have creative conversations. And in the last few days, I've seen someone I really admire. They're in the, the public eye who shared a photo um, on their social media on Easter Monday. And it was an AI image of drag queens surrounding Jesus at the Last Supper. I thought it was pretty interesting. And they were just playing. And there's somebody who's very controversial and very generous in that art and very open-minded and very supportive of humans and artists and creatives and my oh my the backlash to that image was extraordinary not really about the whole christian aspect about trans about drag queens about ai how can you how dare you do i thought you loved artists i can't believe blah 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 vicious my partner was telling me about somebody that he follows on I don't know where, so whether he watches the reels or, or something, and he's followed them for years because this guy has shared his recovery from cancer journey. And he was sharing something of the day where again people were being really mean and he had to make another video going, look, if you don't like where I'm coming from or what I'm saying, go away. <laughs> Stop following me or keep quiet or think about it, because this actually hurts me and it hurts my family and and those are just two examples of how bloody hard it is for any of us. No wonder so many of us do not dare to risk sharing the expression of who we are. You know, never mind publicly. I'm talking even, even to our own like private network or group or fa you know, family as a whole other area, isn't it? It's a risk. It's a minefield. The risk of vulnerability. So it got me thinking about, well, what are we protecting with this vulnerability? Because vulnerability can either head towards victimhood. Yeah, we can become a victim of circumstances. Poor me, oh, oh, oh you did this. No, 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 they don't understand. Yeah, that place. Or we can be empowered by vulnerability. I really experienced deep hurt by this reaction or this response to what I shared and feeling really misunderstood and that's painful to me because I value connection. Yeah, there's a place of victimhood and there's a place of power in vulnerability. But what is it that we are protecting in vulnerability? Because in order for it to be a powerful state where we are free to be, yeah, our voice, to express, to show, to share, all of these places that every single one of us knows. You don't have to be an artist for this to be the case, okay? Expressing how you feel to loved ones, living how you want to live, dressing how you want to dress, yeah. Calling yourself whatever you want to call yourself in this day and age. Enjoying your sexuality however you want to enjoy that. Every single aspect of being human being has that edge of vulnerability. And essentially what it is protecting is the fear of, the pain of rejection, being misunderstood, being laughed at, being exiled. I mean, that's a real base primal part of us, the fear of being exiled from belonging to community, to tribe. Jesus, that's, that would be life and death survival. I think one of the big things though, and this is what I wanna share a little bit, something personal with you. I think the biggest thing I'm feeling for my own self is the protection from feeling disappointment. Disappointment. So really, really curious to know if this echoes anything for you. Being disappointed, feeling disappointed, well, that didn't work. Yeah, whether it's risking your heart for a relationship, whether it's going for that job that you would love to do, your dream job, whether that's submitting work, 
you know, for an exhibition, for a prize, whether it's setting up a business and then having a go, whatever it might be, putting workshops out there, maybe no one books on. Disappointment. It's strong, isn't it? And we feel disappointment because it's a reaction to expectation. So the feeling of disappointment arises out of us having an expectation. Hello, Sue, my darling. It's the letdown of all you imagined it to be and it wasn't. Yeah. You know, we can't... I've, I've been thinking about this for the last few weeks. I think this is why this has been building and building and I wanted to come on here and go, well, you know, express this out. Is... How the hell do we not have expectation? Okay? And save all the bullshit about Buddhism and stay in the present moment, blah, blah, blah. I know, okay? I try. I'm sure many of you do as well. I think it's really impossible. It's like non-attachment. Okay? When I was a yoga teacher, when I was deep into my practices and really, really studying that path and following that... The non-attachment piece is always that kind of grip bit. Non-attachment. Remember asking this, I can't remember his name now, some guru guy. He was a, you know, he had that lightness of heart where everything was just light and humorous and one of those true, wise, enlightened beings. I remember being at a workshop probably 20 years ago and someone asked him about that and he just laughed and laughed and laughed. That was his answer. And it's interesting because a lot of people who say they practice non-attachment end up living from a place of detachment and that's very different detachment connects to not caring okay non-attachment cares deeply it's where compassion can arise and detachment is cold it's cooler so you feel like you're not attached but you're actually not in connection it's the same with the expectation piece. For those going, no, 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 I live without expectation. No, I don't care what happens. I don't care. How many times can we use that? I'm guilty of doing that. No, I don't care. And I've been called out on a couple of uh, friends by this once earlier this year. And as soon as she called that out, it was over something that happened a few years ago. I started to cry. I was like, wow, thank you. There's my heart. We care, don't we? Don't we care? We wouldn't bloody do the things we do or want to risk having our voice or putting ourselves up if we didn't care. So we care deeply. And it's almost like the vulnerability piece is that the, it's the, the weird paradox of caring, caring deeply about our voice, caring about our message, caring about each other, caring about what we have to offer into the world caring about creating alchemy and magic and collaborations and, and all of this beautifulness, caring about what's in our heart and soul and wanting to sprinkle that over the world because that's what actually makes the world go round. So we do care. Um, Hazel saying, oh gosh, yes, it does feel like life and death, Heidi. I'm going through how real horrors, oh, okay. Saying how it is, being generally open to his view is terrifying, not given to hyperbole. Thank you for sharing that, going through that with your relationship right now. Oh, sweetheart. I, um, yeah, I'm hearing you. It's hard because, you know, one of the things around this is we want to um, run away. Or here's what I normally do with this. This, boy, this piece around disappointment expectation. So where I normally go, so again, love to know where you go. My immediate thing is, it's like I've touched a hot plate. Oh, that's it, so that's the owl. But rather than stay with the owl, and oh, owl, okay, it's because, you know, ouch, this is hurting because I'm caring, and there's, oof, it means something to me. I will go, fuck you, <laughs> fuck it, fuck the whole thing. Throw the whole thing out the window, you know, throw it out the window like a rock star, throw your TV out the window. Fuck off, turn away, I don't need you, I don't need that, it's bullshit, blah, 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 shit all over it, and so on. It's quite violent. My reaction can be quite violent to that feeling of anything that presses into the vulnerability place when I care. 
And that's big. That's volcanic. And it's this piece of disappointment I'm realising. And the thing that came up for me yesterday, and I'm sitting with this, and it's the thing that feels alive and I can feel the tenderness of it. I'm feeling this is my father's disappointment. My father, I grew up with a, a, a dad who didn't follow his own path of expression. He wanted to be an artist. He wanted to be an architect. He was had the highest marks in his college and all of this. And he had to, I say had to, go into his father's business, my grandfather's business, market trader, selling your thermal underwear, your big knickers for old people, your nighters, pajamas, and so on. Still doing that now at the grand age of nearly 80. What did he do with um, that voice of, I don't want to do this, or this hurts, or what about my dreams? I don't know. But what he's been left with is a lot of disappointment, which I've experienced that over the years, being the artist in the family. The amount of times over the years, especially when I was younger, my dad would turn to me, if he'd not seen me for a while, and go, have you been painting? The time when I was into painting. And I'd say, no. His face would drop. The disappointment on his face oh my god ouch and then I would feel all kind of oof and I actually had to say to him probably again about 15 years now but this is after you know maybe I was in my mid 30s when I finally said something to him but probably for about at least a decade before that I had this pretty much every time I saw my dad or spoke to him I finally had to turn around and go to him you can't do this anymore this is your stuff this is your disappointment, not mine. But this just occurred to me yesterday, I think because of the journey with this group, other, other things that I've been applying for and blah, 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 we'll go into that another time. It just dawned on me, am I carrying my father's disappointment? Is this part of why I don't always stay the course in the things that I do? why it's almost easier and safer to just be at the side, continue to be the teacher, continue offering stuff out rather than the commitment to my own writing, which I harp on about all the fucking time. Wouldn't I be shown for that every day if that was um, the case? So this disappointment piece feels huge. I want to name it. I want to name that. I think I carry a lot of that because of the explosive reaction I have towards the vulnerability of possible disappointment. And even as I'm speaking now, as I'm claiming this, I can feel goosebumps, I can feel a shift of something. What if I can carry the disappointment with me? What if I can make a character? They're quite fiery, this disappointment character. There could be a lot of fun to play with, to shape shift with this. What if this character of disappointment has a lot to give? Has a lot of it's my fire in that. Just things I'm playing with. So I'd be really, really curious to know your um, thoughts on this. Where do you go with that vulnerability? What are you protecting yourself from? What is the ouch, the care place? Can you resonate with this piece of expectation? I don't know if I'll ever be able to not have expectation, okay? I don't know, and to be quite honest, I can try. I know there's certain things that I can remember or put in place or, or practice and, and, and I can hold that more and more these days. Maybe it's just part of being human. Maybe if I'm waiting not to have the expectation of disappointment is when I think the ideal situation will be in order to have this perfect writing life. So maybe it's part of that. Whew. This is what I wanted to share with you. And there's a little something here that I'm... Yeah, I, I, I'm just blown away by this, okay? All of this. Because what I realize is, part of holding the power of our vulnerability, because it is such the most tender, tender place in us, is we need a structure to contain that, not a keep everything out, keep yourself in, but a porous, evolving, organic, alive, breathing structure. For me, that's community. Spaces where we feel safe to voice things like this, to share, yeah? 
I'm always blown away by the depth of sharing and vulnerability that people in my spaces, courses, groups bring. I want that to feel safe. We have to learn how to express and and feel the vulnerability around around that to begin with, like baby steps first. We need to feel that safety, okay? Safety ultimately comes from ourself, but having a group space and community is vital, especially with others who understand, especially with others in the realm that we're in. This is what I'm wanting to offer to all of you right now. Last summer, I discovered something that has been blowing my mind ever since and germinating beneath the surface. That apparently 92% of people give up on their creative dreams, work, desires, relationship, all of this within the first few months of years of really going for it. 92%, which means only 8% stay the course. That blew my mind. My stubbornness kicked in. <laughs> Thanks, stubbornness. And went, well, I'm going to be one of those 8%. And I've been exploring the number eight. I've been thinking about this. I've been kind of coming back to that a lot uh, since last summer. I have decided to create, hi Claire, hi beauty, something for you guys, okay? So this is something that I am opening the doors to this Monday. I am not publicly launching this until August, okay? So this is just for those of you in my world. So I have created, my darlings, the 8% Club, okay? It's a monthly membership so it's a space, it's a creative community. I've mentioned a few times that I want to encourage collaboration. I want us to share our magic, our gifts, our art, our ideas, our support of each other. Every single one of us is equal in that ability. I'm not just here kind of going, I've got something I can teach you or learn and you take that away and that's great, thank you. I want to learn from you too, I always do anyway. I want us to sit equally in on our thrones, yeah? I want us to inspire each other, to create together, to support, to celebrate, to encourage. The 8% Club is a space for that. I'm opening the doors now, for those of you in my world, to become founding members of this. Okay? What that means is, firstly, you'll help to co-create this space. It's going to be very, very personalised. I need to tell you what it's about, first of all, though, don't I? This is a space for those of you that are serious about your work. That's it, full stop. This is a space for those of you that want to be one of those 8%, no matter what. But know that you are either so sensitive, shy, introverted, you know, creative minds, all of the stuff that all of you are that are in this space and, and follow me because that's how I am as well. This is a space for those of you, like myself, who know the pattern of going all in with stuff, getting really excited, blah, 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 burn myself out, get exhausted, too much effort, it's not really honouring who I am, disappear again and the whole cycle starts over and over. Not sustainable, doesn't build trust, doesn't get momentum going. So this is a space if you have something you know you want to commit to and you'll get it done. This is a space where you're going to put in your strategy of visibility, we work that out and have accountability for that. It's an action space, yeah, coaching group. The idea is you're going to get what it is you want to get done, okay? Write that book, that script, that screenplay, get the exhibition going, start your singing workshops, your women's circles, get that business going, start teaching, get into a relationship, open to love, whatever it might be, but you are serious about it. What's going to be in the space? The skeleton of that right now, because as I say, this is going to be for all of us to create, those of you that come in now as a founding member. You'll get one live group coaching session with me a month. That's valuable. There'll be live coaching on that for all of us. We'll do that over Zoom so all of us can be there. You'll get a library of courses and resources and programs that are... Um, only available to buy, but you'll get those for free. 
There'll be a lot of stuff in there. Once a month, I'm also going to put into the space valuable video resources around a theme or question, something you've brought into the space. So I'm going to give you coaching tips and tools and resources for that. That's only going to be for you. No one's ever going to have access to that outside the membership. You'll be the first to know about future upcoming programs. You'll get discounts on working with me individually, one-to-one. -one. We'll have a community space. I'm thinking of doing it on Telegram. I'm open to ideas because I really enjoyed that last week. And it's not meta and run by, you know, Facebook and so on. So if you're interested in this, I will drop the links down below. The doors open on Monday. If you'd like to have a no obligation chat about this, whether this is right for you right now, let me know. The commitment is three months to begin with, and after that you can cancel your subscription. And the investment for this, for all of that, is only £88 a month. Okay? And as a founding member, your price will stay that, as long as you're in the membership, for a year. When I launch this publicly in, in August, it's going to be higher than that. And one more thing with this, anytime I offer a new live program, you will get 88 quid off that program if you want to do it. So that means you'll get your program for cheaper and you'll also be in the 8% club. This is going to be a space of dignity, authority, sovereignty. I'm very clear about that. It's for those of us who want to take our creative work seriously. And professionally so I will put the information down below I'm incredibly incredibly excited about this and what this is going to be um, let me know if you'd like any more info and contact me for a chat and I deeply deeply appreciate you all. I'm being such a fire myself at the moment. Um, and if you've been catching this on the replay, let me know your thoughts around this whole vulnerability, around disappointment, around the caring, because I think this is a huge thing for us. We can get stuck in this place and not realize why. We have to learn how to bring that in. We can't fix it. There's, there's no way. And we don't want to create boundaries that are too disconnecting from the world there's no point either we can't be the artists who we are without those okay my loves i um, look forward to hearing from you and um, come and join us in the eight percent club it's it's going to be an extraordinary space bye from vietnam see you soon